I apologize in advance if the camera angle is complete and utter trash due to the fact that I have a very terrible, terrible, terrible tripod holding up the camera. And, uh, you know, I need to invest in a better tripod because this isn't even my tripod, but who cares? Anyway, Mr. Wayne coming at you with a quick video. Hopefully it's quick. I don't know if it's going to be or not. But um, this is a video on dust. Dust on the case. Hey, it's me, okay? Just so you know, it's me, Mr. Romain. Um, and if I sound like trash right now, it's because I'm recovering from a cold. Listen. <coughs> yep. <coughs> In my lungs. Just what I needed. Anyway, um, this is going to be a video on my knife collection. I've been wanting to do this. Well, yeah. Collection. Quote, unquote, air quotes, super air quotes. I've been wanting to do this video for a little bit. Um, I don't have the biggest and the greatest collection, but uh, I am semi-proud of a couple of my knives, so uh, let's get into it. Um, first of all, you'll notice I keep it in this very nice Pelican 1450 Kais. 1450 Kais, I turned into Australian. Um, this is actually a very, very, very good case. Um, kind of pricey at 80 bucks, but there's a feature of it that makes it worth it, and I'll show you as soon as I open it up here. But um, very, very tough polymer. Coming. Uh, very tough polymer, really, really sturdy all around. Um, just overall, yeah, this you probably can't uh, can't see at all because I got it like shoved right up into the camera here. But um, it's a very, very nice case overall. Um, the locks at first might turn some people off because they're they're all floppy and wiggly. I don't know if this tag can come off. Genuine Pelican case, can it come off? I don't want this tag in here anymore. I'll mess with it later. But um, these might turn some people off, but that's so that you have leverage to open the case up because, watch this, you can pop the, uh, the latches open pretty easy, but closing them is a pain. Listen, sounds like a gunshot uh, because they, they snap down so, so hard, which is a positive. I mean, this thing is not coming open. I mean, I, th I believe this is actually the case that like the Navy SEALs use and don't quote me on that, <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Like the case that you know a lot of military personnel use um, to keep their stuff really secure. It's also waterproof. Got some pressure release valve here in case I decide to dunk this in our pond in the back. But uh, yeah, so very very nice rubberized handle. Um, metal metal locks here, metal reinforced. So if you want to put a padlock through here, you know if you're gonna be bringing it to the airport because I believe these are also approved for TSA um, TSA checkpoints and stuff. You know, and because uh, they make like a TSA lock for these. Um, and they also make a bunch of other, like, you know, travel gear, travel luggage, all that stuff. So if you're traveling, you know, it's not just this one size case. This actually fits perfect for the place that I put it in um, on my little card table of doom and death and destruction. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a mess. But, uh, but yeah, this fits perfect, perfect where I want to put it. So anyway, let's pop into it, shall we? Because, you know, you want to get what's inside here. Now, I have two... Um, Two cases, uh, this isn't all my knives, uh, this is most of them. I have another small little case that has some uh, some of my cheaper, uh, more affordable knives in there. Um, not saying all these are high quality, but you know, a, a case that got some just random little doodads and stuff tossed in. But these are, this is the bulk of my collection. So let's crack into it here. Alrighty, and the first thing you'll notice is tons of foam, tons of foam everywhere. Uh, that is a very, very nice feature. Oh, we're missing a knife here. That's the one I'm carrying anyway. I'll show you. Actually, four knives, but only missing one knife here. Stick your fingers in there. Um, I just lost my train of thought completely. Oh, yeah. Uh, one nice feature about this, and I'll show you right here, is the foam. Now, this, the foam in here, it, they call it their can't talk. Blah, 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 blah. Pick and pluck foam, which is all you do is you find out where you want to pick and pick and pluck. Start sectioning it off. And you tear that sucker out. Just like that. And I made another spot for a knife. See, they're just little little cube sections here. Very, very easy to modify the case how you want to. The case itself, like I said, is about $80. I mean, depending on what size you get, you know, I believe this one was $80. But the foam inserts are just like... I don't know, like 15 or something. So you can actually buy extra inserts and use the one case. Like, let's say, you know, I got a knife case and if I had a camera, high quality camera, this is a piece of junk camera now. Um, if, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, if I had a really nice camera I wanted to use this case for, I could have another foam insert and then just when I want to carry the camera, just pull all this foam out in the knives, put the other foam insert in, put the camera in and I'm set to go, you know, just 
pick it out, you know, pluck it to uh, the size I want for the camera. So really, really nice feature. You can buy one case and it can do a lot of stuff for you. This would be good if, um, you know, it was like a, a handgun case or um, just something like, you know, whatever you want to carry in here. I just use it for knives right now, but um, you could use it for a lot of other stuff. Anyway, uh, so let's start. Should we start coolest and go to, well, least coolest? I'm doing air quotes like crazy today. Uh, oh, here, look at a split in my finger and split in my thumb and it hurts like a bottle full of rum. I am awful at rhyming. Um, let's actually start with our pens down here, okay? See, and I stuck a couple pens down here in the end because I figured I don't know if I'm going to fill it up to this point. If I do, I'll just buy another case. <laughs> but uh, the pens I have in here, these are all my tactical pens. I do have my Matthew Martin tactical pen. Um, I haven't had a chance to put that in here yet. But uh, these are just two that I got beforehand. This is our Smith & Wesson tactical pen. About $20. Really, really nice. Takes a Fisher. Oops, what am I doing here? Takes a Fisher refill. Squeaky. There you are, Fisher refill, so it'll write really nice for you. Aluminum, uh, machined aluminum pen, very, very nice if you want to get into the tactical pen market. Um, the only thing I don't like about this one, I, I like how it's a clip, a clip cap, uh, where as I get to this hinder, I'll show you a disadvantage I don't like about this one. But um, in here, this uh, plastic polymer thingy, PC, what you want to call it, I don't know, just it, it's plastic. Um, that I've heard that if you use this to strike whip, because see, here's your striking point. It looks like a little bullet like this or something. Uh, there's a pen, and there's a striking point for all you morons out there. I've heard that if you strike with this really hard, that piece could actually shatter. I mean, and first of all, it might save your life, so who cares about the piece shattering? It's only a $20 pen. But it's just one little thing that I'm like, nah, I don't exactly want to deal with that. So um, I actually upgraded to a Hinder Extreme Duty tactical pen, and... This one's made out of aluminum, you know, green and nice, because I like me some green. This is Hindar. Very, very nice stonewash pocket clip here. Uh, Hinder's stonewashing is my favorite, at least right now, out of any stonewashing I've seen. <laughs> oh, man, that sounds really good, doesn't it? Me snorting up snot. <sighs> oh, man. I hate colds. <laughs> but this one is actually a screw cap. And now... That has advantages and disadvantages. First of all, it ain't going nowhere. You know, you screw it on and it's there. You know, it's, it's there to stay. But the thing I don't like about it is then it makes it difficult whenever you're going to write. You know, you got to unscrew it, you know, and put it on the back and, you know, so you don't lose it and blah, blah, blah. And then it makes it look like a really, really stupid pen. <laughs> I'm sorry, that just looks stupid. But um, this also takes a fish refill too. Uh, there is a little spring in there I don't want to lose. Fisher refill. And I would take all these pens apart because I love taking pens apart. Uh, the only thing, the only disadvantage about this pen too is it was like 80 bucks. And that's quite a bit to spend for a pen, especially if you're going to lose the pen. You know, I never use securities at work because where I worked, there was a lot of grease. And I did not want to get a nice pen, an $80 pen like this messed up or lost, you know. So I just stuck with the cheap Bix and all that, that fun stuff. But, uh, so those are the two pens I keep in the case here. And, oh, I don't have any fixed blades in here because I do have my Brad, uh, Bradley Koboom. What the heck? Cold Steel Koboom. The Cold Steel Koboom and the Cold Steel GI Tanto and then a kitchen knife that my brother got for Christmas, or for me for Christmas, because I like the knife from Alice Mattis Returns, even though I never played that game, so he decided to buy me a kitchen knife. So, A plus to him. Two thumbs up. But let's go backwards here. So, because the cool knives, this row up here, like from, well, let's say right here to here. So these, like, one, two, three, four, five, six knives here are, like, the cools that I own. And even though there's one missing right here, right? It's in my pocket. So... We'll start here, right here. We got myself a Benchmade Griptilian. Just a standard Benchmade Griptilian. Nothing really special about it. 154cm blade, no serrations, no nothing. Um, very, very nice knife, access lock wise. Oh, and these aren't in any specific order. They're just whatever the heck I decided to throw in there. So, you know, this isn't the order I bought them in. Um, I will try to name off if there's any uh, special, special knives. Uh, or, you know, if they marked a certain occasion or w whatever. But anyway, so... Well, this marks an occasion as being one of my first knives that were over 100 bucks. Because until that time, my Bradley Kamara was the most expensive knife at 80 bucks. This was like 90 something. So, this and this knife right here, which we'll get to, which is very special. So, um, 
Benchmade Reptilian, very, very nice knife, access lock. One of the smoothest knives I got. You don't even have to put any pressure on this to pop it open. I mean, it is just a butter. I mean, it's like you take two panes of glass, have melted butter between them. I mean, that's the feeling. It's like, yeah, very, very smooth knife. Recommend it to anybody looking for a very high quality, high quality pocket knife. Carry this one quite a bit because it just is such a joy to mess with, to screw with. <laughs> um, yeah. Next, we have a cold steel tie light, which is probably... This thing, I can't really close it one-handed because I'm, I'm kind of nervous closing the tie light one-handed, but just because it, it's such a thin blade and such a thin knife. But on um, this, the speed that this comes out, it is just incredible. I mean, it feels assisted. I mean, you can feel recoil when you open up the stinking thing. I mean, let's see if, can't really see it on there, but I mean, it's just, mine just flies open. Um, I did have one point where it got really, really stiff on me, and I just had to put a drop or two of oil in the pivot and just loosen the thing up like crazy and now it, it just flies open um cold steel they seem to make really high quality knives but they're fairly affordable this is only like 40 dollars, which isn't that bad um i know it's it got a classic stiletto look to it so i mean that's just i hear wind outside it is windy it was like five degrees outside this morning so i was like i'm gonna take a walk and i did it almost froze my face off because i wasn't wearing anything on my face but so cold steel very good company to check out um, next, we have the Gay Onion. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Kershaw Leak in Rainbow. This is actually a, you can see there, right down there. Well, my camera's not going to focus, but uh, it's actually a XXXX, which is a blem, a blemish. This was a blemish I got off of eBay. Um, I really don't see where the problem was with this. It, you know, it's still perfect. hundred. I mean, I, I don't. I don't see where there is a blemish in it at all. You know, let's put it that way. But um, very, very kind of flashy knife, not a little more people friendly. You know, it's not big, mean, scary, tactical, gonna shank somebody in an alleyway. Not that I ever do that, because in my opinion, knives for defense or even attacking somebody are kind of stupid, because you got a higher chance of hurting yourself, but let's not get into that. But uh, just kind of a nice little knife. I was carrying this when me and my brother went to our company picnic, and that was like the only time I carried it. But I figured, yeah, I'll carry it because it, it looks cool. And plus, it's all rounded off. It, feel, it feels really nice. This, all the edges are rounded. So, you know, it's just uh, a normal Kershaw leak would be very, very nice to get. Um, you know, just one of the stainless or the, uh, just the black aluminum ones. But uh, the rainbow one just kind of gives it an extra little flash. And it's a little, little more of a showpiece, I guess. Um, ah, we got another nice knife here. The cold steel, cold steel sheesh. This is a spider, yeah, this is cold steel, look at it, you see opening hole, yeah. This is the Spiderco Salt H1, um, completely rust-proof knife, which is awesome. You can take this thing in salt water, it's not going to rust. Curry Lover has very, a very good video on the H1 steel from Spiderco. Um, it's a multi-part series, go check it out if you want. I'm not going to link it because you should know how to look up stuff on YouTube if you found me, if you ran across me in the netter world of YouTube, but yeah, so this is very nice, um, David Boyle dent on the back so you can find the lock back in the dark because you're going to be using this in the dark. I heard at a gun show one time that the guy, I don't know if it was true or not, but he said that the Navy SEALs carry this knife um, as, or like they're issued it or, or something. You know, it's got something to do with the Navy SEALs, which is cool because it's rust proofing, you know, and they're obviously in the water a lot, you know, because they're sea otters. Um, and it'd be a very, very good knife if you were going diving. Um, they make a bunch of different H1 variants of either this knife or um, other ones that would, be better for cutting, you know, cutting netting or whatever you want. But just overall, very good knife. Uh, the opening hole is a little bit bigger than most Spyderco knives. So if you're wearing gloves, you can get in there and get it. Uh, and you can flick it out. I'm just kind of at a weird position here. And another knife, we're actually going to leave this out for a comparison here. You can see that. The next knife, which is, I believe, my first folder. Not Battle Song, my first folder. Because I had a Battle Song before this. But this is the Spyderco Endura. Which, if I had to rate my favorite knife, this would probably have to be it. If I had to grab just one knife, it's my Spyderco Endura. It is just all around awesome. I didn't like it at first because I couldn't flick it out like that. But now, it's I just lubed it up a bit. One or two drops of gun oil and you're set to go. This thing is just awesome. This 100%. It, first of all, size-wise, it's like the perfect size. It's... It's big enough to, if you had, you know, for whatever you got to use it for, but I don't think it would really scare most people, and especially the color uh, being a nice light minty green is not exactly a scary, oh, black tactical, going to kill somebody color, you know, and um, 
blade blade shape just perfect full flat ground so you're gonna have a really really sharp edge i've actually cut myself on this knife and i didn't know it <laughs> and uh, uh until later i looked and i was like i am bleeding like crazy it was actually this pinky i don't have a scar or anything but i cut it really bad and uh i was me and my brother we were messing around with our knives in our room put my knife away came out here started talking to my mom looked at my hand i was like i got blood everywhere and i mean it was it was just so sharp i didn't even feel it um and i've actually cut myself in the opening hole because i had it like this, you know, just tossing up and down and, you know, it was rotating and it was just kind of sharp and it cut my thumb. <laughs> Got sticky. But anyway, just, just an awesome knife all around. And it actually is almost exactly the size of the salt. So... That's actually the reason why I got the salt because I love the Endura, but I wanted the Endura rust proof. So got the salt because it's almost the perfect size. The only, um, or almost the exact size, only difference really that you're going to see is the handle texture. This has got little squares. Well, this is a uh, different texture. <laughs> I don't know the technical term for all this stuff. Look it up on Spyderco's website. Uh, the back is a little flat on here when it's a little more rounded off. Um, and the tip, this is more like a sheep's foot. And this just is more of like a spear point or whatever you want to call it. So, oh, and this isn't full flat ground. Uh, yeah, the grind starts about halfway down the blade and then goes. But I mean, still, you know, they're almost identical knives, same size. You know, if you handle one, you pretty much handle both of them. Um, but just both of them, really, really awesome knives. What time are we up to? 16, 17 minutes already. Oh, boy. <laughs> All righty. Let's get moving here. Next is kind of a novelty knife, but I thought it was kind of cool. It is the Schrade Viper out the front non-automatic non-automatic it's not an automatic but i mean look at that yeah this is actually spring assist out the front they make a couple different variations of this or the smith and wesson uh i can't remember the name of the knife it's a smith and wesson but it made by the same company uh, taylor brands uh, kind of a novelty but still you know kind of cool it's a uh, double edge actually one of the only safe ways to carry a double edge knife uh a double edged folder so if you can call it a folder just really, really good action. I haven't had any issue with it. Only forty dollars, so you know it's worth it for the novelty, novelty of it. Um, I carry it every now and then, but just, just something kind of cool to have. Alrighty, moving on down the line. CRKT, one of my favorite knife companies because they're so innovative in everything that they make. It, I mean, it's just I, I don't really own. I'm stumbling over my words. I'm like, you're like, what is this moron doing behind the camera? I honestly don't know. I, I don't know, but. CRKT is one of my favorite companies. Uh, they just, they're innovation to the max. They have a bunch of different knife makers working for them, uh, just designing ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of knives. This is the CRKT M1610KZ. I think I got it right. I've already done a review on this. It's a horrible review. Go check it out because it'll give you another view. <laughs> but uh, auto locks mechanism, which I really, really like. I wanted to get the larger version of this knife. I just never have, but this was only like $16 or so. CRK, these knives are very affordable, but they always seem really, really high quality whenever I've got them. So, you know, for what that's worth. Alrighty. Another CRKT, the CRKT Walmart Ripple. This one is, I actually got it at Walmart. Uh, IKBS, ball bearing system, uh, pocket worn finish, which is kind of cool. And very, very smooth action. Mine isn't centered exactly perfect. Uh, I had some issues with the centering, but it's still very, very smooth knife, really lightweight aluminum handle. Um, I would like to get one of their higher end ripples because they are just very, very nice knives. Really sleek, really sexy looking. Uh, all sorts of holes drilled in them because guys like me, like holes is drilled and everything. I don't know why. It's just like pocket clip, just really, really good light knife. I haven't carried it too much. I think I made a video. Oh, no, I, I don't know if I made a video on this or not. I can't remember. Probably. Go check it out. Give me views. Alrighty. My controversial knife, which is the Spyderco Tenacious. I actually have two of these. This is a very, very good one. The tolerances on this one are perfect. Really tight. You know, one really, really good knife. Everybody, I mean, I don't like it as much as everybody else says that they like the Spyderco Tenacious, but uh, I mean, it's a really good knife. You know, really hard use if you had to, but I had one that was complete and utter garbage. I mean, it had blade play like crazy. I mean, it just... I still got it, but it's it's just not not up to snuff. But this one's uh, this one's good. I'm gonna have to sniffle in a second. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> My nose is clean now. <coughs> Dying off camera. Kid dies on camera or on YouTube camera while showing off his knife collection. What do you do? And it wasn't from a knife. Alrighty. My hands are sweating. There we go. All right, Bradley Camara. This was my first. I'm gonna do this off camera here or else I'm going to be killing everybody. This is my first 
knife. Uh, well, first knife I bought for myself that was not a fixed blade. This is a very, very good knife. And for the longest time, it was my most expensive knife at 80 bucks. Um, it's a good knife, but I never really carry it. First of all, because butterfly knives, carrying them for a practical sense are kind of stupid. No pocket. I mean, this is no pocket clip. Really heavy. Takes too much concentration. I just spit on my case. Oh, my God. Moisture. Um, too much... Uh, too much concentration, which I don't have any of. <laughs> too much concentration to open up, and I mean, but they are cool. I, I wanted to get a really high quality butterfly knife because I wanted a butterfly knife, but everywhere I was looking, they were like, save up, save up, get a good quality one, get a good quality butterfly knife. So I was like, okay, I'll do it, you know, because the cheap ones are just gonna get, you know, trashed on you. But so I saved up. That was my first really good knife, and one of my first knives, too. Um, then we move on to a Spider Co. Sage. Very nice little gentleman knife. Uh, carbon fiber, I mean, what can you say about it? That is just beautiful. A nice size, you know, nice size for whatever task you gotta get done, but it's not gonna scare the living beep out of everybody. How do you like my sensor bar? The living day outside of everybody. Wire pocket clip, which I haven't had a problem with in my time carrying it. Um, this actually has a basket weave pattern, which I don't know if you can kind of see it there, but it's a, it's textured, so it's not a flat carbon fiber, so it actually gives you some grip, which is really nice. Speed on it's really good. I like the extra finger trail. That's something I really like in knives where if you put your finger there, you're going to be locked in. So even if the knife does decide to fold on you, it's not going to fold up and slice your fingers off. So just really nice liner lock design. You know, it works. Spyderco makes some really good stuff. Sometimes it's a little bit expensive, but they're really good. Shh. That's how I do basics parody. Yeah! Okay. Random screaming from Mr. Man. Soggy just. Uh, my first spring assist did. One of my only spring assisted. Very nice. Very, very, very nice. Most of my knives are nice. Knives, nice knives. Um, spring assisted. This, I love the blade shape. It looks like a like a kitchen knife or like Alice's knife from Alice Madness Returns, in case you haven't played that game, which I haven't. But really nice, really fast, very sharp. One of my sharpest knives just springs right open. I mean, you can, you know, I mean, it just... It just flies open. Uh, auto auto locks. Sheesh. I cannot get my term straight today. Their arc lock. Really, really good lock, I find. Um, easy to activate. No complaints there. Uh, what's nice about this is even if you undo your lock, you know, it got enough spring tension to... Well, it, it won't fold on you, generally. <laughs> you won't lose your fingers. Soggy just... All right. Uh, moving on. Another CRKT. CRKT... Is that, uh, Hiho, Hiho, right, Hiho, I was going to say Hisatsu, this is a mini version of the Hisatsu, uh, Spring Assisted has the locks mechanism, but not the auto locks, which I prefer the auto locks because it automatically engages, but what can you do, uh, it's very, very nice knife, a little difficult to thumb this sometimes to activate it, but this has a very, very snappy snap snap to it, because it uses a torsion bar in the back that is removable, so if you want to make it into a manual knife, you can, but, I mean, it's just really, really fast. Nice, nice size, too. I like the small knives from CRKT, but, yep, pay doodles. So, that's that. Oh, and a nice deep carry. Oh, which I forgot to mention here. Deep carry pocket clip, like, ultra deep carry, like, so deep that the knife, like, the pocket clip is above the knife here. So, you know, there's nothing showing in your pocket. I mean, when it goes down your pocket, let's see. Like, which side would you be looking at? This side. Like, that's what you're going to see. If that makes sense. So another deep carry pocket clip from CRKT here. Not as good as the Soggy just, but I mean, still very nice deep carry. So now we're moving on to the cool knives, what I consider my cool knives. All the other ones are good knives. These are the knives that are special, really special. All right. Hogue EX01. Yes. One of the biggest massive knives that I own in my collection. This thing is 100% pure awesomeness. Tanto point, aluminum handle, aluminum olive drab. I actually saw this. Oh, yeah, button lock. Complete awesomeness. I actually saw this. Maybe I should get on the other side. So it's not so hard. Watch. Halfway through the video, and I'm like, oh, this, this is how I should have done it. Yeah. There. Now you can see a knife how it's supposed to be. Oh, my foot's going numb. Ouch, my foot. Ugh. Pardon me while I stretch out here for a second. Ugh, there's my foot. <clears throat> in case all you people that are into that. All right. Hoagie X01, I actually saw this in a knife catalog, Tactical Knives, years ago. I fell in love with it. It was on the front cover. 
I just fell in love with the knife. It was, I mean, it was one of those things where I saw it. I was like, yes, I want one so bad. At the time, they were too expensive for me. So I just put off getting it. I finally, I hear the heater going on. <sighs> I'm getting so sidetracked here with just random stuff happening in the house and nobody's even home. So this, I don't know what it is about it. It's, there's something about that tanto point. I mean, the grind on this thing is just amazing. That little extra swedge that they got. I mean, it is just uh, perfection. Right here, the pivot point with your button lock. This actually has a lock so you can lock the knife open where now the button lock won't activate. So it can uh, essentially turn into a fixed blade. <sighs> yeah. But uh, very nice knife, really smooth action. I was afraid that it was going to be a really stiff, gritty knife for some reason. I don't know why, but I mean, it's just really nice. Finger trail down here actually doesn't look that deep, but when you grab it, it feels like your finger's like touching your thumb. I mean, it's you, you get locked right in there, no matter what grip you want it in. Your tactical grip. For all you tactical crazy people out there, they're going to probably get arrested because you're going to do something stupid. <laughs> all right. So very nice knife. I recommend it. Any collection, it's massive if you like huge knives, you know. Other than like cold steel knives, this is probably the biggest you can get. Four inch blade too. You can get a smaller version of it, but honestly you need a four inch blade. Alrighty, moving on. This knife is actually one of my more recent purchases and it's one of the cooler knives that I got. It is a Microtech Vector. Yes, you don't see many of these. It's a manual, manual Microtech. But there's something special about this, and you probably won't be able to see it on camera. Well, first of all, um, nice aluminum handle, like grippy craton inserts. The steel is 154cm. Couldn't remember. Um, very awesome little design. Uh, kind of a small knife, but I don't really mind it that much because Microtech just makes some really, really cool looking stuff. Uh, really futuristic in space age. And what's special about this one, and you probably can't see it. Oh, yeah, this is uh, 1999. This is a blade stamp, but right here, and you're not going to be able to see it because it will not focus. Please focus. Oh, it did focus. See the serial number? 0666. When I saw this on eBay, I had to buy it. It was like a knife with a serial number of 666. Oh, yes. So I bought it. Even though it was like 300 bucks, <laughs> I bought it. I done bought it. Great anodized backspacers. But I mean, it's Microtech. Here, listen. I don't know if you can hear it, but listen. The sound that they make, um, this and my other Microtech, which we'll get to in a second, um, the sound that these make, it's just, I mean, it's just awesome. Yeah. So that's real nice. I have not really carried this because this is one of my safe queens. Uh, what I'd consider a safe queen just because it is, it is so cool, in my opinion. <laughs> Some people might think I'm weird. Some people do think I'm weird. Some people at work thought I was weird. I was like, I got a knife that has serial number 666. They were like, what the heck are you? The any question? I'm like, probably. Alrighty, another knife. You haven't seen much of this. this. is a Warren Thomas Baby Bushido, or Bushido, depending on how you pronounce it, prototype, as you can see by the P1 or PI prototype on the handle. Um, very, very lightweight knife for the size. This weighs practically nothing because it has a G10. The green is G10. This side is titanium, and the blade is also titanium. And that's why the edge looks kind of funny because it's actually carbonized. So the titanium is normally like a softer material. It's really strong, but it's really soft. So the edge is carbonized to give it that hardness so it can hold an edge. And it's I've heard that these are more like a saw tooth kind of edge. But, I mean, it's a titanium blade. It's not going to rust or do anything on you. But it's kind of a nice, cool little addition to my, my collection. I saw it and I was like, yep, I'm buying that. Some of these knives are just on. It's like, I'm buying, I'm buying it. All right, now we get to the trifecta. We get to, we have a Chris Reeves Sabenza, a Hinder XM18, and what's in my pocket right now, what else goes with these three knives, or two knives? A Strider. All right, now, let me see if I can remember which order I bought them in. I believe I bought my I bought my Strider, then my Hinder, and then my Sabenza. And what order do I like them in, or like my favorite-wise, I guess, ish-ish-wise? Uh, I like the Strider then the Hinder, and then the Sabenza. And the reason for that is I feel like the Strider is an all-around, super tough, gonna survive the end of the world knife. The Hinder is still the same, gonna survive the end of the world knife. However, it seems a little too finely machined for me and too expensive, <laughs> where it's almost too precision machined, where the Strider is a little rough around the edges, but it's still really heavy-duty, heavy, heavy, heavy-duty knife. Uh, the hinder almost feels like it's gonna 
you know, it's a little too fine, too, a little too too high pre uh, precision machine. And then the Sabenza is just a really nice dress knife, but almost a little too too fancy for carry. All right, let's go through these one by one, taking a look at them. Here you go. Strider, SNG, yep. You got yourself a Coyote Brown uh, G10 handle, titanium flame anodized, which is very awesome. You got an over, over travel, or hinder, actually, over travel stop. Uh, brrr, can't remember the name of it, the official term. It's hinder, hinder lock bar stabilized, so that's what I was looking for. You have an S30V, or is it S35V, and I don't know. We'll call it S30V. Yeah, we'll call it S30V right now. Uh, Tiger Stripe Tanto Point. Just a very, very cool looking knife overall. That flame anodizing. Let's see if we can get it. If it'll focus for us. Go into macro mode for me. Please, focus. Focus, you stupid camera. I'm waiting for it to focus here. Let's see if I put my hand behind it. it might focus now. Go into macro mode for me, you stupid camera. <laughs> well, still, just very nice flame anodizing. Overall, really heavy duty knife. A little, and you can hear, listen. A, a little rough around the edges, but it's, it seems, I feel like it would never let me down. A um, little stiffer when I first got it, but, you know, playing with it. I play with this probably more than any other knife. Just breaks in really nicely. You know, overall, excellent knife. About $400, but I say it's worth it for a uh, Strider. You know, some people not, might not want to pay it for, you know, pay that much for a knife, but I mean, I think it's worth it. If you got it, you know, try one. All right, now something that I would not recommend getting unless you have money to just blow like I did when I bought this. Hinder, XM18, 3.5 inch, Warncliffe or Warncliffe, upside down tanto point knife. Uh, this, I like just for the sheer manufacturing fact of it. I mean, it's just so precision made. I mean... This is one of the smoothest knives, or probably the smoothest, bleh, smoothest knife, smoothest knives I have. You can, you cannot hear the pivot at all. And I haven't oiled this. This is like how it came from the factory. Just extremely, extremely smooth. It'll just drop right down to the handle. Now, the one thing about the Hinder flippers is that they will not flip unless you give them some wrist tension. And kind of a bummer, but I mean, I don't find it that big of a deal. I mean, you can always use the thumb stud and that'll pop it open for you. But uh, still just really, really nice, uh, highly precision machine. The, uh, but them, I say a lot in case you didn't know. All right, let's see here. Go into macro mode for me. So you can see that stone washing. Please go into macro. I want you to see that stone washing so bad. My stupid camera did it earlier. Oh, well. Oh, there we go. Okay. Maybe. I don't know if you can see that, just the stone washing on here is just beautiful. One of my favorite finishes on knives are stone. Oh, now it's not going to focus for me again on my knife case. Focus, there we go. Beautiful finish, stone washing. I, I just love it. Probably my favorite knife finish. Ugh, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to stretch out here. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, there we are. We're back. Now, probably my highest... High, cl high class knife is my Chris Reeves Sabenza 21, I believe 21, large. I actually got the Damascus blade. Well, we'll do a close-up in a second, but rosewood inserts in a handle, uh, gold color hardware, just Idaho made, which isn't too far away from me. And our Damascus, I can't remember the exact pattern of Damascus this is. Okay, focus for me now. This may take a while. Look at that edge shining right there. I mean, I know it's not focused, but look at the edge shine on there. Okay, this might not focus. Well, let's bring it back here. But that Damascus pattern is just beautiful. Um, my only Damascus knife right now, but and I don't want to use this knife. I don't want to cut it. But even though I'm sure it would be able to, you know, it would function perfect in a cutting task. I don't want to because it's just too pretty and I spend too much on it. But, and just, now here, here's an argument too. People say that the... Sabenzas are the most highly precision machine, the smoothest pivot knives in the world, blah, 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 blah. Sabenza, Chris Reeve, lovers say that. Now, personally, I find a Hinder actually is a lot smoother than my Sabenza. The Sabenzas are smooth, but they're kind of stiff. And I don't, I mean, maybe it's just because I haven't used mine a lot, but I mean, they are very nice. I mean, they center perfect. The click they make when they go into the handles just really is positive. Got some really positive detent, 
but I I don't know. I, I don't maybe if I was just to get your plain old plain old Sabenza, I might like it a little bit better because then it'd be more of a working knife. But as it stands right now, I don't like it as much as let's say my Strider or Hinder. Not saying it's a bad knife at all, but I just don't like it as much. Just my opinion. For what that's worth. So anyway, those are my trifecta, my holy trinity. <laughs> and, oh, actually, this goes in my pocket. I still need to carry a knife around with me. All right, now we get to the, my safe queen, what I consider my safe queen, this. I've shown this once before. This is a Microtech SOCOM Elite. Carbon fiber, just carbon fiber and aluminum handle. You got... One fi oh, no, it's, oh, it's S35VN. Never mind, S35VN. I was going to say 154CM. Just overall great knife. But this is pretty much my safe queen. Now, there's a story behind this. I bought about two years ago, I ordered this knife along with the Griptilian. Now, these were, uh, up until this time, the Brandon Camaro was my most expensive knife at $80. These knives got me introduced into the higher end or like knives that are over 100, you know, a lot of the ones in the upper row here. And it was it was mainly the uh, SoCom Elite because once I handled that, I was like, okay, so these higher end knives, I mean, the lower, the lower end or, you know, the more affordable, I should say, you know, they're good. But some of these knives that cost a little bit more, they are awesome. And I actually ordered this one with the grip tape insert because they didn't have the carbon fiber in stock. I really wanted the carbon fiber, but I figured I'd settle on the grip tape. They shipped it to me and it actually, it was the wrong knife because the screws, let's see if I can get you here. I don't know if you can really see the screws, but they're the Microtech Tri-Wing. Yep, focus in right there. Oh, it actually thought that I was a person. <laughs> My camera registers that as a person face, a people face, a person's face. Um, the one online I ordered, it actually showed that I had uh, just, you know, your standard hex or can't think of the name. Oh, what's the name? These. Torx. You're staring. Oh, man. I'll get a sniffle again. Mm. Excuse me. Just had your normal Torx screws there. Now, sure, it's easier for a user, you know, if you're going to be a user and you want to take apart your knife or whatever, but these I find are more collectible. And Microtech knives tend to be collectible because they only make so many of each and then, one, you know, they're serial numberized and then once they're gone, they're gone. And I, I like the tri-wing design because I thought, you know, it was more of a collectible design. The carbon fiber, you know, it made it look a little more kind of high-end. Um, but they didn't have that one in stock, so I ordered them with the grip tape and just the normal screws. And it took forever to get here because we had a really bad snowstorm that year. I ordered it. I had to send a check in because I didn't have a credit card because I'm lame. Um, so sending a check took like a week to get there. They shipped it out. It took like two weeks because of the snowstorm. We missed the package. So we had to wait for them to re-deliver. I mean, it took like a month prior to get here. But once I got it, it I was like, okay, I got it. Now it is just one of the best knives I've ever received it, because it took so long and I, I anticipated for so long. Once it did get here, I was like, okay, this is, this is cool. So that's, if you understood that story, all my mumbling, um, Oh, and I didn't want the tanto point, but I think the drop point here just, it just adds to it. I mean, it's its better than a tanto. I want a tanto, but I think it's better than a tanto now that I got the drop point. But this thing is just so, I mean, it's no pressure. It just flies open. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, too bad they're not making these anymore. I know Microtech normally makes automatics, but their manuals, I mean, their manuals are really high, high quality in my opinion. But anyway, so that's kind of why this is my... My safe queen gets number one spot here until something else takes over. But I don't, even if I was to get some high-end custom, I don't think anything would ever take over that spot. That is a very, very special spot in my case. It's number one, and that's what it gets. It gets number one. Still space for other ones here, but I need some money before then. And, yeah. Oh, I don't know if you can see me here. Let's see. Let's move the case out of the way. And I'll lay down in front of the camera for you. Howdy. Yeah, I'm on the floor here, and this is kind of an uncomfortable position to film in because now my feet are killing me. Let's get back up. Biggie, 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 biggie. All right. So, that's my knife case, knife collection as of right now. Not that big of a collection, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it, I'll tell you. So, we will see you later in the netherworld.